You mentioned earlier that uh, you, when you started your, just to backtrack a bit, when you started your, your own uh, promotion in 73, you trained and had uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper in your first camp and on your first show. Did, did you know at the, the time that uh, he was breaking into the business that he would become the phenomenon that, uh, and all time legend that, that everyone sees him as today? See, he was 17 years old when he approached me. He gave me, he gave me ten dollars down payment for the club fees. I never see another dime after that. I realized this guy is you know, a good talker, and I, I spar him. And he's got good talent, so I trained him anyway for nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. So one night, the way the way he got his name was uh, was about. Uh, he says, "Tony, tonight I'm taking music lessons. I cannot come to the club." But my my answer was music lessons. <laughs> I didn't believe it, right? <laughs> But anyway, he comes back to the club about quarter to 10, and this was uh, 1973 in February. I said, did you take your music lessons? You don't believe me, do you? I says, no, I do not believe you. He goes in his car, he brings his bagpipes. I said, what the hell are those things? He says, I'm taking music lessons, and that's what I play, bagpipes. I said, can you play them? He did. Now, I didn't have a name for him at that point in time because June 5th, 1973, was going to be his first event. And against me, that was. And I said, I'll tell you what, I haven't got a stage name for you for the ring, but I'm going to give you one right now. His name was Roderick Toombs, of course, that's a real name. So I shortened the name to Rod, and because of the bagpipes, I called him Roddy Piper. Mm, brilliant. Simple as that. And then I, you know, like I said, it, I say, use the gimmick that you have. They say, you got the skirt that goes along with it. You mean the kilt. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, the uniform, I said. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I have to say one thing about Rod. He had one habit a lot of time, which I warned him about it. Uh, he's a smoke of marijuana. Those days, he used to be against the law. Today, everything is legalized, right? Mm -hmm. I said, from that stuff, Roddy, when we go on the road, which, I, you know, he was with me about three years, the, I don't want you to smoke in my, in my van. Because those days, you used to get stopped by the RCMP on the road or whatever. The first thing they did, they put their, their big nose inside the car to smell the marijuana. Hmm. They call you, you make front page in the news, which is true. I mean, you're in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. So one day, we're driving, and of course, Roddy, you know, I mean, God, let him rest in peace, a poor guy. But beside the point, he was smoking his ass off. It's Roddy. Kind of I said, why don't you tell him to stop the car, go in the bush, because up north... So Bush and, you know, and, and, and Road, that's all you're going to see. And uh, he says, who are you to tell me? My father? Says, no, of course I'm not. I'm not your dad. I said, stop this car. We went outside. We had it out, right? And of course, you know, the experience I had, what he had, I kicked the hell out of it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simple as that. But beside the point, we met up. Uh, we, we had to finish the tour. We had, uh, I think, uh, 18 days on the road, but whatever. We became friends again. And of course... Later on in life, he says, Tony, can you do me a favor? I say, if I can, why not? He said to me, he says, I don't know what to do. I said, well, well, what, what's the question? He said, I'm engaged to be married to Miss Manitoba those days. And uh, I don't know if I should get married or hit the road and became famous. I said, Roddy, I cannot answer that question. You know what I mean? Don't get married. But he, I, one thing I have to say to him, he told me what he wants to be in life. And he did it all, believe me. He says, I want to work for a big company. I want to be a man of honor. I want to be a movie star. He did everything. What he told me that he's going, he wanted to be. But like I said, his habit did not stop there because the boys, the rest of the crew, like the AWA boys, used to tell me, Tony, he says, this guy, he trained really well. He's a hell of a talker and a good wrestler too. He says, he makes $22,000 a week those days, which was a lot of money. All Kogan is making 25000 But he smokes up 15000 up his nose. He started hitting the Coke or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I never seen him smoke Coke, but that's, that, that was the, 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 the rumor that they, they used to tell him. And apparently the poor guy, you know, that's, that, I think that's where he died. But he did what he told him he was going to be. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and, and an all-time legend, for sure. Now, oh, my God, yeah. He was a good guy, don't get me wrong. He only had those type of habits. Like, some people have habits of drinking. Some people have drugs, you know, 
uh, and so forth. You know, he happened to be him, right? But he was good talent on, in, in the wrestling, as we all know that. 